Greetings, fellow seekers of the unexplained. Miss Story Mystery here, and today we're diving into the enigmatic world of true tales that will leave you spellbound. Welcome to episode 26 of our journey through the mysteries and oddities of our reality. In this spine-tingling installment, we've collected five stories that will challenge your understanding of the ordinary. From the hair-raising experiences of living in a haunted house, to the unsettling encounter that makes you question the boundaries of perception, these stories will have you at the edge of your seat. But remember, these aren't just tales. They're real-life accounts from people just like you and me. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be captivated by the inexplicable. And if you are as curious and intrigued as we are by these enigmatic stories, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell. Because with Miss Story Mystery, the truth is stranger than fiction. Let's dive into the mysteries together. When I was seven or eight, my family moved into a brand new house in a Washington, D.C. suburb. It was a newly constructed house with all the fixtures brand new. However, I was terrified in that house. I couldn't bear being alone upstairs even during daylight. It always felt like I was not alone. Strange things happened there. My bed would inexplicably rock back and forth as if someone were pushing it from the foot. My sister would hear knocking sounds beneath her bed. I would often sense someone watching me from the top of the stairs. These eerie occurrences continued until I left for college. After dropping out of college, I moved back home and stayed in the basement. One night, my then-boyfriend was staying over and the light in the living area suddenly turned on by itself. After we turned it off and closed the door, the door mysteriously opened on its own. My boyfriend refused to stay over after that incident. A few years later, my boyfriend and I got married and moved to a place eight hours away from D.C. I was pregnant at the time and went to visit my mom while my dad was on a business trip, so it was just my mom and my younger sister in the house. I was lying on the couch, and my mom had gone to the grocery store. That's when I heard the creaking of someone coming down the stairs, and in the reflection of the glass above the fireplace, I could see bare feet standing at the entrance of the living room. Thinking it was my sister, I called her to come and give me a hug. The feet turned and walked towards the kitchen. I got up and went to the other side of the living room to greet her, only to find no one there. I then remembered that my sister was at work. My parents have retired and moved away from the D.C. area, and I haven't been back to that house since. I'm now living in a farmhouse built in the 1800s with my kids, and I don't feel the same level of nervousness and discomfort as I did back then. I still wonder if there might be some rational explanation for my experiences, like high EMF frequencies, but I'm not entirely sure. I was around 13 years old when this happened. I'd had some strange experiences before, but this was the most unsettling of them all. The house we had just moved into was terrifying. The air felt heavy, and everything seemed darker than it should have been. Numerous odd occurrences took place. For instance, my mom claimed she heard my voice screaming at my cat when I was at school, something I'd never do because she was my beloved pet. We also witnessed silverware clashing around and the drawer opening and slamming shut on its own. Money, which we always seemed to need shortly, would disappear and reappear in strange places or not show up at all. One day, I noticed some bright red droplets on the floor next to the side of the bed I slept on, like vivid arterial red. I never figured out what it was and I couldn't get it out of the carpet. But the turning point for me came one night when I fell asleep on my back, a very vulnerable position for those unaware. I always slept with a TV or the lights on, as I didn't want to be in the dark alone. That night, Pirates of the Caribbean 3 was playing, with its music box intro before you press play. Normally, it was comforting. However, when I opened my eyes, there was a young woman hovering above me. She was eerily still, as if standing, 
her face devoid of expression. She had pale white skin like porcelain and she wore a sky blue dress with white lacing. The dress looked old, very old. Her black hair was slightly longer than mine. I was sleep deprived at that point from being terrorized every night and my brain wasn't functioning correctly. I barely acknowledged her presence. I just turned over onto my side and went back to sleep. The dream I had that night was utterly horrifying. I was surrounded by pitch black darkness and I felt something intensely malevolent, hateful, and just evil in the room with me. I jolted upright. I was back in bed, still in the dark. This cycle repeated, and each time I got closer to the door. At one point, when I opened my eyes, she was standing next to my bed. I got a good look at her then. The top half of her head was missing. Not in a gruesome way, but it just faded into nothing. It wasn't there. She then smiled at me. I can't describe that smile, but it was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. Everything seemed normal about her face, perhaps except for the fact that the smile was a bit too wide. However, the evil within it chilled me to the bone and I felt completely at her mercy. Somehow, she forced me back into the dream. Eventually, I reached the point where I touched the doorknob. When I finally woke up, it was early morning, around 6 a.m. The movie's music box theme was still playing. The TV was still on. I had been tormented throughout the night. I ran out of my room, and I knew it was real. I was free. I was alive. Later, I described her incorrectly to my mom's boyfriend, who's sensitive to the paranormal. I said she didn't have eyes, and he told me he had seen something similar. It wasn't as if she had black holes for eyes. He mentioned seeing a girl he thought was me sitting at the end of the bed one night, but her head gradually faded away. He rubbed his eyes, and she was gone. I was shocked because someone else had seen her and they were telling the truth. The last encounter happened before I fell seriously ill. A couple days later, I was hospitalized for my second pulmonary embolism. I have a genetic mutation that makes my blood clot easily. Looking back, I believe I narrowly escaped something unimaginable. My mom, her boyfriend, and I were sitting at the dining room table. I felt her presence materialize in another part of the house, something that had never happened before or since. The chandelier above the table started swinging, not back and forth, but in a circular motion. We all stood up. I felt her coming closer. She appeared in their bathroom and was making her way through their room into the dining room. At that time, I had two cats. They completely lost it. Fur raised, hissing and spitting, they darted into the bedroom. I felt her moving through the house, from the dining room into the living room, then into the hallway towards my room, and finally into my room. As she entered my room, I felt the heavy presence suddenly vanish. The chandelier slowed down, My cats relaxed and returned to the dining room, acting as if nothing had happened. I will never forget that experience. Ever. It left me with an intense fear of the paranormal, and I genuinely believe that I could have... Well, I'm not sure what she was trying to do, but it was undoubtedly something disturbing. A few days after this, I ended up in the hospital for three months. We lost the rental house, and I never returned. My son was about 18 months old, getting on real well on his own. My mother had bought him this little tyke slide, and since we didn't have a backyard of the house we were in, we put the slide in his room by the window. One morning, I was doing housework and was getting ready to vacuum. It was a small house that would take me less than 15 minutes to vacuum the whole place. 
So I put my son in his room to play and put up the baby gate to keep him out of the way. He headed right for his slide, so I figured that would keep him occupied until I was finished. I'm down the hall in my bedroom vacuuming, when suddenly I'm hit with a wave of nausea so strong I thought I was going to vomit. This never happens, so I'm waiting for it to pass, and a sudden thought comes to me to go check on my son. I push it away as I was almost finished, and I would go get him momentarily as soon as I put the vac away. As soon as I resume pushing the vacuum, a voice yells in my ear, Go check the baby! So loud that the little hairs in my ear start to freak out. As I reach up to put a finger in my ear, I feel hands physically push me in the direction of the bedroom door so hard I am shoved to my knees. So hard as a matter of fact that in the following days, I felt like I had a slight whiplash. Needless to say, I have a freaky adrenaline rush unlike anything I've ever felt and I pop to my feet and go running down the hallway to check my son. As I round the corner, I am met with a more horrific sight than a dozen spooks. My son is standing on the top of his slide, all smiles, with a mini blind cord wrapped firmly around his neck. One little foot is waving out over the slide like he's preparing to throw himself down it. I launched myself over the baby gate to get to him just as he steps off. I got to him just in time and gathered him up. The cord was wrapped around his neck three times and had already left a mark, but he was okay. I was destroyed. What would I have told the grandmas? The narrowly avoided tragedy was immensely scarier than the event that preceded it. I thanked whoever that was profusely, said a few more prayers of thanks throughout the day for allowing me to avoid a horror that would have haunted me with guilt for the rest of my life. When I was about six or seven years old, I was playing in my backyard. By the way, our house was on a hill, and there were rumors that it used to be an Indian burial ground. I had this set of dinosaur toys, and I was having a blast playing with them on my swing set. The sun was setting, and I remember glancing up at my grandmother's porch. It wrapped around the house, and on the opposite side, I saw something strange. This figure had a white face, dark, empty eyes, and long black hair. It slowly bent over so I could see it better. Being a kid, I briefly thought, could it be my grandmother? She does have black hair. I dashed back to the house, went inside, and found my grandmother in her bedroom just lying on her bed watching TV. She assured me she hadn't been outside at all. I've got more stories about that land I grew up on. Almost everyone who lived or still lives there is part of our family, and we've all had some odd experiences. But this is one of the creepiest that comes to mind, and it still gives me shivers when I think about it. When I was around 15, my family and I moved into a three-bedroom house. My older sister chose the bigger bedroom, and I ended up with a smaller room down the hall which had a bit of an eerie vibe because of a window at the end of the hallway right next to my bedroom. While I was in the process of moving my stuff into my room, I noticed something peculiar on the windowsill. It looked like a nail, and I thought nothing of it as I carried on arranging my belongings. Little did I know that the house had a rather spooky history. It had previously belonged to an eccentric old woman who had passed away in the very same house, my parents revealed this unsettling detail to me later when things took a turn for the worse. As I continued unpacking and getting settled, I suddenly felt a cold draft despite it being the middle of summer with scorching heat outside. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of a motionless black figure by the window. I was about six to seven feet away from it since I was in my room. At that moment, I froze feeling an eerie chill run down my spine. Without a second thought, I raced downstairs to my parents, unable to find the right words to explain what I had just experienced. After calming down a bit, I recounted the strange encounter with the shadowy figure, but my father's response left me feeling hurt. He simply said, You're not a child anymore. 
In an attempt to reassure me, my father accompanied me upstairs to check things out. He inspected my room and the nearby window, but found absolutely nothing. Several hours passed, and we all gathered for dinner. My older sister, who was usually busy texting her friends at the table, was in a particularly foul mood. Despite being an introverted girl, I usually took on the role of the family chatterbox during dinner. I started asking my dad about his day, he worked as a construction worker, and he mentioned it was just an okay day. Suddenly, we heard a loud thud coming from upstairs. Our dining area was located next to the stairs, so we could see somewhat into the hallway. My father, now with a concerned tone, asked, What was that? He swiftly rose from the dining table, grabbing the old bat he kept in the kitchen for safety. Slowly, he ascended the stairs, the sounds growing louder with each step. Thump, thump, thump. I was terrified beyond belief. He finally reached the top of the stairs and stood in front of my room. His gaze shifted toward the hallway window, but no one was there. The noises seemed to be primarily coming from my room. He attempted to open the door but found it locked, which was puzzling because I never locked it and there was no key or mechanism to lock it. It was an old doorknob. My dad pushed his weight against the door with all his might, causing it to finally swing open forcefully, nearly sending him tumbling. Alarmed, I rushed upstairs to check on him. My dad reassured me he was fine and attributed the door's difficulty to being stuck. As he talked to me in my room, I couldn't help but glance at that window. What I saw there was nothing short of horrifying. The dark figure was still standing outside, peering directly at me through the window, and I let out a scream so piercing that the neighbors could have heard it. My dad rushed to my side but he couldn't see anything. Then, just as quickly as it had appeared, the figure vanished. To this day, nobody believes my account of the chilling events that took place in that house. Nevertheless, I'm relieved that we eventually moved out of that unsettling and creepy place. As we come to the end of this mesmerizing journey through five incredible stories of mysteries and the unexplained, I want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of our ever-growing Miss Story Mystery community. Your support, your curiosity, and your passion for the enigmatic make all of this possible. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you've been entranced by these stories and want to keep exploring the unknown with me, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you've got your own stories or thoughts to share, please do so in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Stay curious, stay vigilant, and stay mysterious, my friends. Mystery Mystery, signing off until our next adventure into the realms of unexplained wonders.